Beetle. Syrup oozed from the canteen on top of mountain of pancakes. The chimney carried the aroma through the drowsy valley that surrounded the landscape. A beard of brothers yawned burly, grizzled and groggily, making sounds that a bear makes. Coffee is ground into a man-made mini oil spill, a fountain from her fan blades. Mother and her cubs toss and turn down in the spare caves while the hounds wait. Howling in serenade, the fly fisherman's laurel skips, skimming, rippling into the mouth of a trout of seven shades. The butterfly drifts with finesse and grace, in and out of the November rays. The sparrow barrels in and pounds the suspenseful space, penetrating, weighing less than an ounce of aggression and rage. These trees are 70 to 80 years old in this adolescent stage. They are at an evanescent age, susceptible to this tiny insect which has spread the plague. Swarming clouds of insects prey upon these trees like they are being drowned in pepper spray. This insect wipes out several acres every day, from the Appalachians to the Aspens to the Everglades. It isn't getting cold enough to kill this insect who survives the mild winter weather temperature change. The same size as a grain of rice, this insect embeds its fangs with a deadly strain. Filled with glycol, nature's antifreeze, it leaves a blue telling stain, epidemic once largely protected from this insect because of altitude, shelter, the fate of these trees are nearing extinction in large portions of this nether range. When catastrophic fires meet torrential rains, our forest grows at an exponential rate, seeing an entire mountainside embezzled in flames. From the ledge of a plain, the scent of resinous haze, the forest floor inheritably drained like steam rising from a mop bucket like a couple capfuls of pine saw, chemical vapes. Our ecosystem cleanses itself of its insect skeletal frame. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear, does it not make a sound? Does it not register weight? The sound of beetles, all you hear is pestilence, branches dead in your wake, everywhere you step in it breaks, the deer jumps at you bucking bluffing, it gently escapes, nestled in the face of the tree, the beetle gorges to its stomach content in the case. A little bit of the oxygen in the room was just swept away, kept it in case, take a deep breath, you're safe, if you wander around into the forest you may never be found, better stay. The nearest town is 20 miles away. They say they can still hear our dogs barking on a clear December day. One a minute and a half. The spear spiraled with a splintering twist, curving into the clouds and whirling down with a merciless sound. Perched in the lounge, the emperor observes the murderous crowd, motioning to his spectators, surging devout, golden goblet quenching the thirst from his mouth, a slave weaving a leaf over the perfect crown, fanning the sweat dispersed from his perked up brow. The emperor is learning about a gladiator re-emerging with a certain clout. Shackled in chains, he's worthlessly bound to a dirt mound, furiously frowned. Behind the Colosseum curtains is concernedly foul. The reoccurring growl of lion, tigers, and bears circling, unnervingly roused. Vermin scurry around, merchants lurking in subservient gowns. Slaves pick up on the vibration through the earth's diverging ground. The gladiator churned his joust into the lion that swarmed and pounced. His claws urgingly gouged, blood squirting the crowd, went berserk as the proud cat lying in the corner hurting the howl as the gladiator hurled his joust into the tiger that purringly proud he purposefully plowed his weapon into a side of the bear's neck curbing the sow, inverting its snout. The emperor smirked wow from the lofty Colosseum box seats. He yearningly shouted into the turbulent sound. The gladiator worked the crowd until the reverb of 
astounded, twirling his jowls at the emperor, shirkingly crouched. Slave, are you not sane? The emperor sent out his surges who herded around the gladiator, converging and scowled. You worship and bow. The gladiator reverses the Persian's joust, jerkingly jousting into the armor suits, lurkingly slouched, slurring with blood squirting from their blurting mouths. They gurgle and drown, blood curdling now. The gladiator is exerted, cursing his town, who chant his name like rehearsing a vow. The emperor stunned by this merging, affirming vouch, unanimous the concurring house blurts out. The Colosseum torches burn profound in the kerosene. They were doused and whirled around. The thirsty crowd repeats the gladiator's name disturbingly aloud as the emperor looks underneath the birds and shroud. The urging crowd urged aloud as the emperor sat through a third denouncement impervious to the blurring slur of outs, outs. The gladiator prepares himself for the worst outs, but the emperor assertively allows the gladiator to fight another day after a superb bout, earning the clout. The emperor still passes judgment on the gladiator with his thumb.